Here we go. And I think he saw me first. But greater invisibility should just give me sneak attacks like crazy anyways. I hit him. I didn't see the damage. See if that was to come up better if we do it like this. And swing. Uh, see, it just goes so quickly. Can I please do some damage on these guys? Gosh. Hey guys, thanks for clicking the video. Make sure you like the video and subscribe and turn on notifications. Take out a pen, write a letter, send it to youtube.gov and tell them to send you all of the latest updates from my trash channel. By the way, while we're here in this comment section below, let me know what you guys think I should build out next, which kind of class character build thing you would like to see in this channel of mine. Today I'm bringing you a Paladin Rogue build because I told you guys I would stop using rogues. So for this build, we're gonna be going ASMR because they're overpowered until they give me something that's more overpowered for these type builds is what I'm gonna use. ASMR, first level is gonna be Rogue uh, and we're actually gonna go for Thug. You guys keep asking me to do this, uh, but Thug's gonna get us some brutal beating, but it's also gonna give us this cool frightening. We're gonna do some, doing some charisma based stuff with our Paladin Rogue. Um, on the Heritage, we're going for Muse Touched, also known as Azata Blooded, or Azata. I think it's Azata. Uh, because of the two to Dex and the two to Charisma, you also get Persuasion, Mobility, and Glitter Dusts, but that Persuasion is really what we're looking at right here. We're putting our Ability Scores 13 for Strength, 18 for Dex, 10 for Constitution. <coughs> Man, 14 for Sneezes. 14 for Intelligence, 12 for Wisdom, and 16 for the Charisma. We're going to be using a lot of armor here, so you want to pop over to some stuff that's not going to be um, working with things that your armor is going to be messing with. So, you know, but for the rugs, you kind of do rogues. For the rogues, you kind of do want some trickery. We're definitely going to be using Persuasion, Use Magic Device, um, persue Persweption. Perception would be nice. Uh, if you want to do stealth, you can. I would recommend putting a point into mobility, even though you're going to get some armor check penalties going on. Since you are a, a rogue and you have uh, Muse touched, you get plus two there. Um, you have two more points. Knowledge world would be good if you want to. Again, I'm a rogue guy. Trickery and stealth is where it's at. So long story, uh, did not read, whatever. One for mobility, trickery, stealth. Perception, persuasion is where it's at. Use magic device to be able to cast spells. Our first feat we're going to take at level one for this rogue thug is going to be in the unrecommended area. Where's the stinking thing at? Did I go? I went right past it, guys. I'm blind. Power attack. It's going to open us up for some feats later on. And we've got to go lawful good because we're going to be dipping into paladin. At level two, um, we are again taking this fancy, fancy little rogue guy here, um, putting our points where we said we were going to put them all in those little areas. I don't really want to go through that every single time. We're going to take weapon focus, um, rapier here, rap rapier, because of crit stuff, dex and crit stuff on this one. We also get evasion at this level. At level three, we're going to take another level of three. Thug, rogue, such a thug. I am a gangster thug member person. Here, the feat we're taking is, you guessed it, dazzling display. People have been asking me to do this. And we are going to finesse training our rapier. Isn't that fancy? So we took dazzling display, which is going to allow us to, whenever we use, um, whenever we're using weapon focus, um, I can click this button uh, for dazzling display, and it will allow me to intimidate within the 30 foot 30 foot range makes them all like their stuff go down it's it's pretty i don't want to get in explaining it and all this stuff we'll look at that in a little bit finesse training rapier uh lets us use our dex to damage instead of our strength we also get brutal be beating here which lets, uh, lets us forego 1d6 points of sneak attack damage to make the target sickened for a number of rounds equal to half of my rogue level let me show you guys what Dazzling Display really looks like real quick. When we click Dazzling Display, it's a toggle, and in a 30-foot range, it will actually demoralize all of my opponents. At level 4, we take Paladin. Um, I just go for base Paladin. You guys can grab whatever you want, but I'm going to take Paladin for a couple levels here. 
Um, I don't think that the other ones for this build are going to give us um, anything that I want other than just giving me what I want here. Um, I just, I'm going to go for base paladin. Maybe you guys can let me know in the comments below what you would do. Every single time we get a dexterity point, it's going to be, or an ability point, it's going to be going to dexterity. Now here you have to start picking and choosing because we only get three ability points. I would go for use magic device, persuasion, um, and then... Man, you got to choose it. Um, negative one studded leather. Um, start going for whatever's your highest, okay? You want to work on your strengths. It doesn't really matter which deity you choose. Just choose one. Um, but here you get uh, smite evil, smite evil. Some armor proficiencies. Light, medium, heavy. You get martial weapon proficiency and shield proficiency, okay? So we're going to be doing that. At level 5, we're also taking that next level of Paladin. And again, we want to put those points into something that's already high, which is Mobility, Persuasion, and Use Magic Device. I'm going to use, at this level, Accomplish Sneak Attacker. You could go for Dodge, but later on, you'll have a free feat way down the road. Um, and also, you're going to be able to pick up Wings later on, too. So some Armor Class stuff. I'm going to grab that Accomplish Sneak Attacker here at level 5. We also get Lay on Hands Others, Lay on Hands Self. We get Divine Grace, which is now going to add our Charisma bonus to all of our saving throws. At level 6, we take um, Rogue again. Okay, we went for two levels dipping in there. But at level 6, we're going to go for Rogue again, putting our points mainly where they were. And then you got to decide 1, 2, 3, kind of leveling those guys back up some. Now here, I would go for the Skill Focus, and I would go for persuasion because you want to be able to intimidate with your um, debilitating stuff like crazy. You want to be able to use your skill focus persuasion to pull off your dazzling display, um, shatter defenses, corn again smash, those things later on. Also at level four, we're going to be getting our disorienting injury, which lets us either choose to give the person we sneak attacked negative two to armor class or um, negative two chance for them to hit us. So that's good. We also get uncanny dodge here, which means that other rogues can't sneak attack us um, that easily. Uncanny dodge means that we don't become flat-footed, so that's good. At level 7, we are taking our first level of fighter. We're going into fighter because down the road we get uh, weapon training here. We're going to grab this weapon training, which is going to make us do um, some plus 1 to attack and plus 1 to damage with it. So we're going to go fighting. Um, I'm not grabbing Aldori Defender. I'm just going to go for regular fighter, guys. You can pick and choose what you want. Again, that mobility, going for persuasion, use magic device. And here at fighter, which is level 7, we're going to grab Corner Again Smash, which whenever I hit anybody with a power attack, it automatically does um, that dazzling display in a 30-foot burst. So we hit Corner Again Smash, and then instantly we're able to grab Shatter Defenses. Um... Any frightened, shaken, or panic opponent you hit by this round is flat-footed to your attacks. This allows us to get sneak attacks on people that we hit right here at level 7. This build is crazy powerful already. We also get some fighter proficiencies, which allows us to use the tower shield if we want to do. At level 8, we take another level of fighter, because why not? This starts to give us bravery, giving us some more will saves. Uh, we're going to put that point in dexterity, of course. Mobility, persuasion, use magic device. At level 8... We are going to go for Combat Reflexes, which lets us use, make an additional attack of opportunity per round per dexterity bonus point we have. So at this level, I think we have four or five, which means that we can make extra opportunity, attacks of opportunities per round to four or five, I think. Um, I have five, so I can make five opportunity attacks per round. Again, we get our will saves here. We get combat reflexes. At level 9, we're grabbing fighter again. This gives us some armor training, which means that our armor check penalty goes down by 1 um, at this level. So that's pretty cool. Fighter level 3. This is level 9. We are also going to grab uh, some points of mobility, persuasion, use magic device. We're going to grab a really, really powerful feat here. I keep calling them perks. Um... Seize the moment. When an ally who has this feat confirms a critical hit against an opponent that you also threaten, you can make an attack of opportunity against that opponent. So you want to get you and maybe two other frontline fighters um, with this perk and give them high crit range weapons like Kukri's, Rapiers, Falcatas, things like that. At level 10, our fourth level of fighter. And at this level, we are going to grab, uh, again, the mobility, persuasion, Use magic device. 
Level 10, we're going to grab Improved Critical, and we're going to go for Rapier. Ray, ray, rapier. Real. Demonetized. Way down here. Rapier. Improved Critical, Rapier. So now our crit range is already going to be crazy with this. I believe now it's 15 to 20. If we hit a hit between 15 and 20 on the attack rolls, we will be getting a critical hit of amazingness. Level 11, we take our fifth level a fighter. It gives us weapon training. Okay, that's the plus one to attack, plus one to damage with a, a certain type of weapons. Mobility, persuasion, use magic device. Here we're going to actually take weapon specialization rapier. It's going to give us plus two to damage on um, all damage rolls we take with our rapier. So we're going to go boom right there. And then weapon training, light blades. Now this is going to include not only the rapier, but also the short sword, sickle, kukri, dagger, star knife. You got to be careful. Some of these you got to make sure you grab one. We're grabbing Weapon Training Light Blades, which is right there, the Rapier. This is plus one to a bonus on attack and damage rolls with the Rapier. At level 12, we go back to Rogue Thug. Put our point in Dexterity. Put a point in Mobility. Persuasion. Use Magic Device. One, two, three. Who knows? Whatever. We don't really, really get much here. You just get Rogue. Okay? It's what you get. Um, but at level 13, we go for Rogue again. Level 6 Rogue. Level 13 is level 6 Rogue. Mobility, Persuasion, use Magic Device, Trickery, Stealth, Perception. And, and maybe, guys, honestly, you should have been putting your points in Perception, in Knowledge World, something like that. You don't have to worry about that mobility, but I like putting the mobility in there. So at level 13, we're going to go for... Um, we're gonna Our feet is going to be Wings, okay? So feet is going to go down here, and we're going to grab Wings. And then we're going to go for Combat Trick, and we're going to go for Critical Focus inside of there. Critical Focus gives us a plus four Circumstance bonus on attack rolls made to confirm a critical hit. At level 14, we go for Rogue again. Put your points back in here, as we always do. You don't get much at level 14, but at level 15, we go back into Rogue. Um, and here, we're going to put that point of Mobility, Persuasion, all those things that we've talked about over and over and over again. And here at level 15, we are going to go for um, Staggering Critical. Staggering Critical is going to make them staggered for 1d4 rounds plus however many you reduce them by. Okay, so Staggering Critical. And then we get a, a Rogue um, Combat Feat. Now, earlier on, you could have used or a Rogue Talent. Um, for me, I, I kind of want to use Fast Stealth. I like using Fast Stealth earlier, but I kind of wanted to uh, get the weapon focus and all that stuff quicker. So Fast Stealth is what I would go for here. Um, Iron Guts is good against if you're fighting off poisoning, stuff like that. Um, we're not going to use Intimidating Prowess because we don't have a lot of strength anyways. Um, Candy Observer is great for perception checks. But Fast Stealth is really my go-to. Okay? Staggering Critical. Improved on Candy Dodge. Okay? Can't be flanked unless the other rogue that's trying to flank us has four or more rogue levels than we do. Now, at this point, level 15, your build's pretty much done. I like to go, I, my voice cracked, I like to go more into rogue, so at 16th level, I'm going to grab another point in dexterity, go for that rogue uh, mobility, put the points here, grab them where we're supposed to. We don't really get much here at level 16 other than that dexterity point. But at level 17, we become rogue level 10. And here's what I would do with it. Um, I'll build the build out for you guys, and I will play it as a level 16 character to show you the power. The power of the babe. What power? Um, for the feet, we are going to go... The feet here we can grab is that dodge we talked about. And then our rogue talent um, is going to be... Opportunist is good. Um, character make an attack of opportunity against an opponent who has just been struck for damage in melee by another character. This attack counts as an attack of opportunity for that round and can't be used more than once per round. But this is really good. Anytime one of your friends uh, who's next to you attacks an enemy that you're next to and hits them for damage, you get an extra attack against that enemy. So you have to weigh opportunists versus double debilitation here or crippling strike. Double debilitation means you can also hit them with negative armor class and negative chance for them to hit. For me, I would go for opportunists because I feel like I would be doing more damage to them quicker rather than them you know, having less armor class or less chance to hit me. I would rather me and my buddies, um, you know, they're going to be giving me an extra attack right here with opportunist. Okay, 
Um, I think this blends in with our seize the moment. Um, it blends in with our combat reflexes, and it might overlap with combat reflexes, but still getting this uh, attack of opportunity just for hitting somebody, just for, um, you know, Lindsay being melee with a dagger, hitting them, I would get a free attack against them. So I, I like opportunists here at level 17. Level 18, I would just finish the build off with Rogue here um, because I, I, you, you guys know I like Rogues, okay? You guys, you guys know this already. Go into some more finesse training here if you want to. Um, you know, maybe you want to finesse training the Kukri. You know, if you if you have a good Kukri here. Level 19, we'll grab that 12th level of Rogue. And here again, we have some fun. Uh, again, the build was pretty much done way back in the day uh, at level 15-ish. Um, so you could do what you want here, have some fun. I would go for outflank for sure, because whenever you hit uh, a flanked enemy, it provokes another attack opportunity for somebody else who also has um, outflank here. I would grab double debilitation because you can anyways. But again, we wanted to end that build at 1617. By the way, I love the fact that you guys watch these building these building videos with me. We don't get anything really cool um, at that level. So let's uh, let's kit this guy out, put on his armor and everything, and show you what we're gonna do with him. Okay. So we are at the Candlemere Lake Tower thing, and I know that there's a lot of wisps out here. So I just threw on my character here. I used harem. I threw a jack ton of protection from energy and resist energy on him just because I know what's going on. Let me show you what we're rocking with here. We have got disorienting injury, negative. So the, the target would have negative two attacks whenever I sneak attack him. We also have bewildering injury, which means that they would have negative two armor class. I also have brutal beating, which means I'm going to sicken them. Um, I got my wings on. Okay, look at my... My swag looking wings right there. Um, I also have staggering critical on. Um, so we, we are just gonna be debilitating them like crazy. Um, and if I wanted to, we could look at my, uh, with my armor on, negative 10 to athletics. My mobility is still pretty good. My stealth is pretty good um, because I've got a um, 10 cloak of shadows on trickery is trash. Um, since I'm lawful good, I'm actually able to wear the blessed path. So, yeah, um, we kind of like that. Um, I'm also wearing gloves of dueling. These are going to give me plus four combat defense against disarm attempts. And if I have weapon training ability and is wielding the weapon it gives to the bonus, that bonus increases to plus two. I am using a masterwork rapier. I could not find um, anything else. You see my armor class just standing here. It looks funny wearing this like this. I want to make a halfling fighter with a tower shield. Let me write that down. But my defense is 31 here. Uh, attack is 23. Uh, I can wield all of the shields, so I also have a medium shield around here somewhere in all of my gear. Where did my medium shield go? Oh, I'm, I've got the wheel, medium shield right here. I'm an idiot. So, got a me medium shield there. It's going to give me um, better chances on um, my mobility and stuff. It's not as bad. It's only negative one because of the heavy shield, my encumbrance and everything. Um, but, you know, I want to show you guys... So that's three armor class versus five armor class. We want to put that extra two in there, kind of show you. Um, also, when you put a tower shield on, uh, see right now with medium shield, my arm, my attack is 25. You put that on, you're going to lose two armor, uh, two attack right there with the tower shield, unless you're using the tower shield specialist. So let's go and um, show you guys what our power attacking. Do we have power attack on? Because we should. We're going to go power attack some stuff and go power attack some wisps. So right here, uh, the Wisp, War Wisp, did their little lightning thing, um, and it says that I evaded the effect of lightning um, because of the reflex throw, so that's cool. And that's even with having um, a Tower Shield gave me some stuff, Hardy Meal, Divine Grace, so that's cool. But um, I didn't have to do any kind of um, resistance yet. Uh, so we're going to go over here with this War Wisp, and go kind of crazy on him. He's level 11 and we're hitting this guy at level 16. So we just smashed him for a critical hit, 79 damage. Got 26 of it with sneak attack. Um, yeah, we, we really, really like this character, especially with his rapier and getting those crits. This is only a masterwork rapier. It's not a, um, a keen one or anything like that. Maybe you want to go in stealth in here and see if we can get some sneak attacks. Um, I've got combat stealth, or the, sorry, the fast stealth. I don't see how this guy saw me, but whatever. Um, we'll go for both of these guys. And um, it's not hitting, for some reason, Cornigan Smash. 
is not doing what I want it to do. It's I am power attacking on, you can see that, and I am using, maybe I can't disorient and debilitate these guys, but I just hit some sweet sneak attacks there, as you can see. Let's scroll that down. Um, we hit them for 44 damage with some sneak attacks, 57 with some sneak attacks there. So those two guys are just toasty. We're gonna come over here for these boys and um, hit them up. So 48 plus 26, critical hit. So man, I just, I went crazy there. Um, the damage is fast, guys, with this rapier. And he's a tanky character. I mean, he's rocking. Let's look at their misses on me. Let's space bar that. Okay, War Wisp, Fortitude, Fail. Okay, update, yeah, we got that. War Wisp, what did he try to attack me with? Does it show my defense is what you wanna see. Um, those guys are flat-footed, so that's good. It's not showing me any kind of attack on me to show my armor class because um, <laughs> I'm dying. Should I use athletics up there? Okay, this guy attacks me. Let's go over here and have some more fun. I missed. I like that. I hit him. Critical hit. Uh, 66 damage right there. This is just a crazy, crazy build with the tower shield, without the tower shield. Um, there's a point where I kind of wonder uh, what I would be like without even using, uh, let's throw padded armor on, right? Let's just be stupid. Um, so our armor class goes down quite a bit when we do that. Taking that off puts us down to 23. We would be much, much squishier, um, but in doing that, we would have a lot more stealth, a lot more persuasion, um, sorry, a lot more stealth, trickery, mobility would be going crazy if we did that. One thing I would like to do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this scroll of greater invisibility and I wanna go invisible um, and attack these guys, okay? Is that okay with you? Can I do that? Let's redo that real quick. We're gonna do the scroll of greater invisibility on myself. Poof, invisibility. And you know what, let's put the armor back on. Who cares, who cares? Give me that armor, go crazy. All right, we got the Blessed Path armor on. We've got in greater invisibility, which should let us sneak attack, crazy. But I think they can still see through, I'm stealthy right now, see see that stealthiness? Um, I'm not seeing the bad guys, here we go. And I think he saw me first. But greater invisibility should just give me sneak attacks like crazy anyways. I hit him, I didn't see the damage. See if that will come up better if we do it like this. And swing. Uh, see, it just goes so quickly. Can I please do some damage on these guys? Gosh. 69 to 79 damage. You guys just see those things flying, okay? Um, they come across their 69. I, I do. When I crit them with damage, I get extra free crits. Um, so I like this build. It's very, very tanky feeling. If you don't want to go rogue sneaky, you can go fighter paladin-y. Um, we got some good saves. It's a really, really fun, fun build. Learn how to end a YouTube video.